Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? what you've done. You're trying to run away, but I'm going with you. Saturday night, and CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the story of the killers. The rain beats down in torrents, and during the brief flashes of lightning, a certain stone building stands out in the darkness of the night, the courthouse of a county in a southwestern state. A murder trial has come to a conclusion, a sensational trial in which the young killer has been tried and convicted of the brutal slaying of five people, his employer, Farmer Atkins, and Atkins' entire family. The defense, appointed by the state, contended that the slayer was insane. Now the killer stands before the judge. The jury has found that on the night of September 13th, the entire Atkins family was brutally slain with a meat cleaver wielded by the defendant, Joe Nichols. In the absence of sufficient motive other than the $20 found on the defendant, the defendant was placed under observation by the state psychiatrist. And the said state psychiatrist find the defendant suffering from dementia precox. Therefore, it is the duty of this court to commit the defendant to the state institution for the insane. And so, Joe Nichols was taken to the state asylum there to be placed under observation and treatment. Now let us travel south in the same state to a certain farm, a farm belonging to the widow Agatha Mayberry. There's no connection whatever between Agatha Mayberry and the insane killer Joe Nichols, but let us go to the farm anyway. Agatha's husband died three years ago and left her with a rather large farm. At first she managed things very well, but then came the war, and hands became scarcer and scarcer. Then Agatha's sister, Ellen, came to live with her, and Ellen's daughter, a lazy girl named Della. Hmm. Storm is coming up stronger now. Did you get those calves in like I told you, Della? What did you say, Aunt Agatha? Get your nose out of that magazine and you could hear me. Aunt Agatha wanted to know if you looked after the calves, darling. No. No, I forgot. You'll have to excuse, Della. You just can't get used to this sort of life in so short a time. You've both been here almost a year. Give her time, Agatha. Huh. Give her time. I'll give her time. Get out there, Della, and see if those calves are under shelter. But I, I might catch my death of cold in this storm. Those calves are worth more than you are. Go on. <laughs> she's frightened to death of lightning, Agatha. I don't think she's frightened of anything. Why don't you hire a man to do these things? Huh. Wish I could. Men are scarce these days, all in the army. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> poor baby. You you stay here. I'll go and see to the cab. You do no such thing, Ellen. Stay here and take care of your baby. And I'll attend to the cab. Well, you'll be all right just as soon as the storm's over. Yeah. Well, you've got to do something around here, Della. At least you can wash the dishes. But I dried them yesterday. Don't hurt your beautiful hands. Anyway, I've got to do something around here under these conditions. You need a man. You need a farmhand. Yes. But I can't get one. So the only thing I can do is to get rid of some of this land. Sell it to someone who can handle it. Well, uh, Mr. Dalton made you an offer for part of it, Agatha. He offered to buy some. Yes, I know. And he can handle it. Has a couple of sons. And a daughter who isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. So, uh, how much do you think he'd pay for it? Well, I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Agatha, where are you going? I'm going to see Mr. Dalton, my neighbor. If I can make a deal, I'll make it tonight. But it's stormy, Aunt Agatha. I've been in storms before. I'll drive over there and be back in an hour. I'm not a sissy. 
Go on to bed, Della, and pull the covers over your head. <sighs> and Agatha's selfish. She's mean. All she thinks about is this farm and work, work. I don't know anything about a farm. I can't learn. I won't. Well, you, you don't belong on a farm, Della. Doesn't suit you. I won't herd animals. I won't milk cows. Oh, there, there, darling, don't <laughs> cry. Mother understands. No one understands me. I won't be a slave. And Agatha's trying to make a slave of me. There are people for such work. There are men for such things. Well, but men are scared, darling. Men are scared. Then we'll leave. We won't put up with it. Well, how can we leave, baby? We have no money. No. Well, I won't take care of animals. I'm going to be a model. I should be a New Yorker or in Hollywood. Now, now, no, darling, don't let yourself get excited. Mean and selfish. And I hate oh, her. Please, Della, darling, calm yourself. Who does she think she is ordering me around like a slave? I won't stand for it. My silly old fool, I hate her. You don't mean a word you say, darling. You're, you're just upset now. Please try and relax. Please. No. No, no, baby. <laughs> While Della, poor little Della, sobs and sobs in a fit of hysteria, and Agatha drives on through the raging storm, and ten minutes later pulls to a stop in front of her nearest neighbor's house, the house of Farmer Dalton. Anybody home? Dalton! Well, the land of mercy, Agatha Mayberry. Well, come on in, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> You must think I'm kind of crazy running around on a night like this, Mr. Dalton. Well, there must be a reason for it, Agatha. Yes, there is. I want to talk business. Business? Well, all right. What's on your mind all of a sudden? You want to buy the east half of the farm? Why, uh, sure. I, I told you I did. What was your offer? $2,000. Well, that's a little low, don't you think? Well, perhaps, but uh, well, what are you going to be able to do with it? You ain't got no men folk around. You'll have to let it go to grass. Yes, I know that. But if we could only get a few women to give up their fancy manicures and long fingernails, it wouldn't hurt them any, I know. I've tried it. Yeah, you're right about that, I guess. Well, let's get down to business. You'll give me $2,000 for the east half of my land? Yeah, that's right. Well, the deal. Good. Shake. <laughs> now, um, how do you want it? Well, how are you prepared to handle it? Well, I'll tell you, I, um... <clears throat> I collected a thousand dollars cash from Henry Jacobs late this afternoon. It's too late to put in the bank, so uh, I'll just give you that cash and a note for twelve months on the balance. All right, fair enough. Make out the note. All right. <clears throat> I, John Dalton, in consideration, the sum of one thousand mm. dollars. Well, there you are, Agatha. I see. Well, uh. Shouldn't we have a witness to this transaction? Well, if you uh, want it that way, <laughs> sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Dalton. That was a swell supper. Oh, uh, uh, come in here a minute. I, I want you to do something. Sure. Sure, anything to say, Mr. Dalton? What can I do? Uh, Joe, this is Mrs. Agatha Mayberry, my neighbor of the West. She just told me the east half of her land. I'm paying her half cash and the other half on a 12-month note. Uh, I'd like you to witness that note, you would, Joe. Is that necessary? Oh, I don't know, but that's the way Agatha wants it. Very well, I wouldn't miss it. There you are. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Joe. And uh, who is this man? Well, <laughs> Joe came here today, early this morning, and he's worked like a dog all day, done ten men's work, and that's something I can't understand. What do you mean? Well, he's been discharged from the Army because of a physical reason. He's a 4F, but... Certainly didn't show any bad signs today. I can still do a lot of useful things. I thought you had enough men around here to handle things. Oh, I have, but he was both hungry. Well, if you don't really need him, how about lending him to me? I could use him. Yes, that's right. You could. Uh, she's got a farm and not a man on the place, Joe. How about it, huh? Sure. Sure, I'd be glad to help her. Fine. Well, you go on with Mrs. Mayberry. She really needs help, Joe. She lives alone with her sister and her young niece, and they can't help her much, but you can. The deal. Right. Well, here's your $1,000 cash, Agatha, and the note. 
Next payment's due in 30 days. I'll have it there. <laughs> I'm not worried about you, John. See you later. Well, now, you better keep an eye on me. I'm a strange sort of critter. I forget sometimes, you know. Well, come along, young man. It's getting late. The storm's getting worse. Yes, yes, I know. Are you alone? Yes. Good night, Mr. Dalton. And thanks for everything. Good night, Joe. Say your name was? I didn't say. But my name's Joe. Oh, I see. Ever do any farm work, Joe? Yes, I've done a little here and there. Well, you're sure welcome. Why did you sell half of your farm? Because I couldn't take care of it. You sold it short, didn't you? Yep, two thousand dollars. And it's really worth four thousand. You gave me a thousand cash and this note for the balance. Aren't you worried about carrying a thousand in cash? No, why should I be worried? Oh, I don't know, but it's kind of risky. Is it? Aren't you afraid of me? No, I'm not afraid of anyone. No? Well, that's good. How long have you been out of the Army? Three days, over four months. I was wounded in Bataan. But I can do lots of things, even if I am discharged. Well, I'm glad to have you. Glad to have anyone who can do anything. Dark road, isn't it? Yep, no one could drive on it if they didn't know it. Any crossroads? Nope, none. How much farther is your place? Mm, about two miles. Oh, that far, huh? Big farm. Well, what do you think of that? Must have got to wear that after all. Mm, that's what it sounds like. Oh, I hope it keeps going. I'd hate to have to walk the rest of the way in this storm. That mud? Yeah, that wouldn't be good, would it? Maybe you'd better stop and let me have a look under the hood. All right. Shall I turn off the motor? No, 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 not yet. fan isn't working. The belt's slipping and your motor's too hot. Well, can you fix it? Yeah. Yeah, I can fix it. Have you got a uh, wrench? Yes, in that door pocket. Oh, yeah. Hey, here we are. This will do it. Turn it off. Well, what are you staring at? Oh, I, I was just thinking what a brave woman you are to be riding around alone on a night like this with a thousand dollars in cash. Seems to me Agatha's been gone quite a while, Della. Yes, it's been almost an hour. Maybe she got stuck or something happened to the car. <sighs> Still right if it did. I don't care if she never comes back. Yeah. What are you say? You don't mean that. Well, maybe not. But I was just thinking. So were you, but you won't admit it. Admit what? If she didn't come back, why? Well, then we could leave here. We could go to New York or Hollywood and I could follow my career. Oh, well, we could sell the farm and everything. I have plenty of money to live on till I got started. We sell the farm? Don't be so dumb, Mother. Wouldn't you inherit all her property? Don't talk like that, Della. It frightens me. I can imagine how frightened you are. You're not afraid something has happened to her. You're afraid something won't. Be still. All right. Getting worse. Yes. That will make the road slicker, muddier. You had to keep from skidding. <gasps> Della, Della, don't open it. Who's there? It's all right. Open the door. Good news, maybe, Mother. What is it? Oh, it's mighty wet out here. Are you uh, Mrs. Mayberry's niece? Yes. What happened? Well, she had a little trouble, and uh... where is she? Is she all right? I'm her sister. No, don't close the door. She'll be along in a moment. Is she? How did it happen? Well, the fan belt slipped and the motor got hot. And then when she started down that steep hill, the car started to slide and she went into a tree at the bottom. I see. Where is she now? Well, I got in the garage all right. Not hurt much. Front axle bent a little. Agatha, uh, what? She's all right. Yeah, well, I certainly had a time with that car. Well, what do you mean, all right? Of course I'm all right. But we thought... Make some tea, Ellen. I'm frozen stiff. Who's this man? Oh, th this is Joe. Joe, this is my niece, Della, and this is her mother, my sister, Ellen. We've met. We're going to have a man around here. Joe's a new hand. Maybe we'll get some something done around here for a change. Did you make the deal with Mr. Dalton? Sure. He paid me $1,000 down in cash. Balance monthly. Joe here was witness to the deal. Witness? Yes, I happened to be at the Dalton's place. I worked there today. 
Your aunt said she needed a hand, so here I am. So you're going to stay here? Of course. Well, how nice. Your aunt's a very brave woman to take a chance riding with a stranger in a thousand dollars cash around her neck. Oh, I'm not afraid. I'm a pretty good judge of people. Well, since you aren't going to make that tea, Ellen, I'll do it myself. Sit down, Ellen, before you fall down. Turn on the radio, Della. I want to hear the news in a little bit. Are you married, Mr. Uh, Joe? No. You're not in the army? I was. Uh, medical discharge. You look tired, sir. Yes, I am. I wonder if you'd mind if I'd turn in. Not at all. Well, is there a separate building for the hands? No, I suppose Aunt Agatha intends for you to have the spare room upstairs. The end of the hall. I see. Well, good night, Miss... Uh... My name is Della. Good night, Della. Good night, Joe. Good night. Night, ma'am. He's a bit odd, isn't he? I like him. He's not bad looking, either. The murder of a farmer and his entire family with a meat cleaver. He was later found to be insane and sentenced to the insane asylum. He escaped last night and is believed to be heading south. This man is dangerous, regardless of his seeming sanity, and authorities are to be notified of any man answering his description. He is five feet nine, dark brown hair, blue eyes, and his name is Joe Nichols. He was last seen... Oh, Della. Della. It's him. And his name is Joe. Yes, Della. His name is Joe. Upstairs in that spare room is Joe, a mad killer. That frightens you, doesn't it? You and your mother and your aunt. Three women alone in a house with a madman. And the man knows about the thousand dollars. What are you going to do, Della? What are we going to do, Della? What do we do? Be quiet, Mother. I'll tell Agatha. Agatha should know. Come back here. Be quiet. Agatha should be warned. Maybe she will. What to do? No, it's not a word to Aunt Agatha. It only frighten us. We've been called the police. Call somebody. We can't. The phone isn't working. It's gone dead. It's gone dead? Della, what do you mean? What I said. I tried it earlier this evening. Well, when? I don't remember. You be still. Now go upstairs and go to bed. Go upstairs? But... No, Della, I can't. We... We've got to tell I can go to bed. But, but what if he should? Della, he knows about that money. I kill us all. There's a gun in this table drawer. I can see both your room and an agitator from this chair by the door. I'll stay here in the dark until morning. You understand? Yes, but please. Go on upstairs before Agatha sees you. Go on. Everybody. Where's Joe? Said he was tired, so he went to bed. Mother just went up. After all, it is late, Aunt Agatha. Yeah, right, it is. You look tired, Aunt. Perhaps you'd better... What's the matter with you? What are you trembling about? Trembling? Why, uh, well, I, I think I've taken cold. A little chill. I, I'll be off. Better take some quinine and go to bed yourself. Yes, but I haven't been sleeping well lately. I'll, I'll read for a little while. Then I'll be off. I missed the news. What did it say? I said that, uh, uh, nothing's important. Oh, I see. Well, better drink some warm milk and go to bed. Right. Good night. Why didn't you tell her, Della? Do you really think you can handle the situation? You think you can cope with a madman? Your face grows more pale. Your hands tremble. <laughs> Della steps to the table, studies the phone, then opens the drawer, takes the revolver, turns out the lights, and slips into the chair by the door. As the hours pass, the storm increases to a fury. It is three in the morning now, and Agatha sleeps soundly in her four-poster bed. Then her door opens softly, and a tall figure steps into the room, slips to the side of Agatha's bed. A few moments pass, then a hand reaches toward Agatha's throat, removes the money bag. Agatha opens her eyes. Well, what do you want? Oh, what is it you... The storm has reached 
reached its peak. A few minutes later, it has passed over, leaving only the fall of a light rain. Suddenly, Della stirs in the chair beside the door. A figure is slowly, stealthily coming down the stairs. Reaches the bottom and starts to cross the room toward Della. She wakes breathlessly, then snaps on the light. Where were you going? Why, why I was there. What are you doing down here? Where were you going? Well, the storm woke me up and I, I got a little hungry. I thought I'd have a look in the kitchen. You were headed the wrong way, Joe. Huh? The kitchen is over there. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. I guess I got turned around in the dark. I don't think you were confused, Joe. What do you mean? You had no intention of spending the night here. And you weren't planning to start work in the morning. Of course I was. I know who you are, Joe. I know all about you. What? How do you know? Radio. There was a warning and a description. They said you were in the and what are you going to do? Phone the police? No. Phone the dead. Yes? I'm not afraid. I understand your comment. What do you mean by that? I don't condemn you. I sympathize with you. You do? Yes. If they know I'm in the vicinity, then I've got to get out of here. You've got a little money. Haven't you, Joe? Yes. Then I'm going with you. What? You're going... What do you mean? I can't do that? Yes, you can. You've got to. Once we're across the state line, everything will be all right. State line? I don't get it. I've got to get away from here. I've got to. I'm being held here against my wishes. Held here? Yes, they think I'm crazy, unbalanced. Crazy? You, you don't act crazy to me. Neither do you. But they've got some reason for keeping me here, and I can't stand it any longer. I have left before, but I haven't got a cent, and they watch me like a hawk. Here are the keys to the car. I don't need a car. I can hide out better on foot. I don't want anybody with me, especially a girl. And besides, I don't intend to cross the state line. But you're taking me with you. Nothing doing. I'm getting out now while it's dark. Wait a minute. Uh, what? Jeez, if I had to open that door and go to the garage. Now go off. Remember, you're a thief. And if I shoot you, they'll say nothing of it. Straight ahead to the garage. <laughs> Here. This is the main highway. Well, why the main highway? I'd rather keep to the side. I wouldn't. Straight ahead. Uh, maybe they're right. Maybe you are not. Oh, are you crazy, Joe? Certainly not. Of course not. Neither am I. Where does this highway go? To the state line. Look, I'm in, I'm in a tough enough spot as it is. I'm not going to try and cross the state line with a girl at this time of the morning. I'll take care of that. I know. Straight ahead. I could wring your neck for this. <laughs> You're just the one who could do it. I've got one chance in a thousand of getting over that line. We'll make it all right. We'll make it. And keep both hands on that wheel. I know what you're thinking. I could send this car over, you know. But you won't. Well, you? you. Hey, look. Red lights ahead. Yes, yeah, state line. One of the lights is swinging. They're signaling to stop police officers. Yes, Faster, Joe, faster. Go right on through them. They'll never catch you. I said faster. Hey, stop. Stay hard. Stop. We've made it. Keep going. Hey. What's wrong? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think we've broken a piston rod. This old crate can't take such a beating. Here they come. Now I am stuck. Don't move, Joe. Stay right where you are. You little sap. Don't you move or I'll shoot. Put up your hands, buddy. What have you been drinking? All right, all right, all right. What's the idea running over the state line like that? Didn't you see the lights? Well, you see, I... I uh... Maybe he's colorblind, Tom. Thought they were green. He seems to be sober, all right. Let's see your driver's license. I haven't got one. Let's see your draft card. I haven't got one. That is with me. Well, you hear that, Frank? Who are you? Hey, hey, Tom. Look, slumped down in the seat. The girl. Throw your light on her. Look at her face, all bloody. Open the door. She's been bashed in the mouth. Wait a minute. Is this your gun, buddy? No, no. What's this little pouch on the seat? I, I don't know. Look, Tom. Look at the bills. Look at the water money. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hey, sister. Are you all right? All right, sister. We're state police. Police? What happened to you? It's him. Who? Who is this man? He came to our farm last night. 
He robbed my aunt and made me come with me. He kidnapped me. She's crazy. She's a nut. When we crossed the line, I tried to scream and he hit me. You don't know who he is? No. No, his name is Joe. I think he's a lunatic who escaped from the asylum yesterday. She's crazy, I tell you. Get out of that car, buddy. You're coming to headquarters. <laughs> Come on, miss. What happened then? Well, after Mother and I heard the announcement on the radio, I knew it was him. I, I couldn't call the police because the phone was dead. Why didn't you go for help? Because he knew that Aunt Agatha had the money. I was afraid to go because of what he might do. I got Aunt's gun and sat by the door where I could see him as he went into his room. Yes? But I, I, I must have fallen asleep because I, I waked up just in time to see him coming down the stairs and start by the outer door. I turned on the light and... He said he was looking for the kitchen. It was then you realized that while you'd been asleep that he'd gone into your aunt's room, killed her, and taken the money? Yes. If I hadn't fallen asleep, I might have prevented it. I could have shot him. Officer, you know this woman's crazy, don't you? Crazy? Yes. Yes, she told me so herself. She said she was being kept a prisoner by her aunt and her mother because they knew she was unbalanced. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Joe. Maybe she is crazy. What? What do you mean by that? She's crazy. Yeah. Crazy like a fox. He's lying. I never said I was crazy. When Joe came to the farm and you realized he was the escape killer from the asylum, you decided to take advantage of his being there and kill your aunt so your mother would inherit the estate. How can you say such a thing? That's horrible. You knew Joe would try to make a getaway when you told him about the broadcast. You had the money and the gun. You forced him to take you across the state line. You knew we'd chase you and catch you. You dropped the money bag in the seat and when we caught up to you... You hit yourself in the mouth with the gun butt. I didn't. I didn't. Ah, yes, you did. We know all about it. It was you who went into your aunt's room, took the money, and hit her on the head. How can you say that? Because your aunt saw you standing over her bed. She called headquarters an hour ago. You what? Yeah. You didn't hit her hard enough, Della. And you lied about that phone. It was never out of order. She she isn't dead. This is ridiculous. Why would I do such a thing? <laughs> he is an escaped lunatic. A, a, a mad killer. Why should I be accused of such a thing? Stella, <laughs> Joe Nichols was captured a half hour after the broadcast. This man isn't Joe Nichols. He's Joe Davis, a deserter from Camp Higby. But I think he's ready to go back and face the music. Oh, believe me, Lieutenant. I thought I couldn't stand it there any longer. So I ran away. But after all this, well, just take me back to camp. It'll, it'll be like paradise. Well, there you are. A strange story that might very well have ended disastrously for Joe if Della hadn't slipped up on two things. The telephone and the failure to learn if Aunt Agatha was really dead. Even though Joe has not escaped as escaped lunatic, he might very easily have been charged with murder had it not been for the over-anxiety of the vicious-minded Della. Della wasn't crazy. She was just a selfish little fool with no thought for anyone or anything except her own individual existence. There are a lot of you like that. Think it over. has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.